about getting this other so Let me talk about DeFazio for a minute. Sure. You know, guy is a bum. He is totally lazy. He tries to champion himself for, quote unquote, turning down pay raises. Right. He doesn't do any work in the first place. DeFazio has <laughs> been in office for okay. 32 years now. Yeah, okay. He has sponsored 488 bills. Only nine of them were ever passed into law. Yeah. And only one of those was within the past 10 years. Now, is that, is that a lot lower than a lot of other legislators? I mean, is those stats like inferior performance when you compare them to other legislators? Or? Unfortunately, that's pretty comparable to uh, a lot of legislatures out there. DeFazio is one of the more senior members, so mm -hmm. most people in Congress haven't had the opportunity to get as little work done as he has. Okay. Because that's a nice way of putting it. Okay. And then... Uh, in addition to his 488 bills that he sponsored, he's mm -hmm. co-sponsored almost 7,000 bills on top of that. Mm -hmm. And these aren't, these aren't you know, one or two pages for a congressional bill. Mm -hmm. We're talking about stacks for each of these bills. And that's the reason we don't get any real work done in Congress, is because they check in after their you know, six months of vacation, and they've got literally a mile-high stack of paper to go through. If Peter DeFazio had another 60 years in Congress, he couldn't get half of the bills passed that he's introduced into there. Well, you know, we shouldn't have this legislative swamp. Let's bring back uh, the six months yo, yo. of a vacation. What yo, are you yo. talking about six months of vacation? Yeah, you know, they're just on vacation all the time. You know, they, they just take all these breaks and extended vacations. And, and then when they're not vacation, what are they doing on vacation? Are they they're asking their friends for, for money. money. Okay. Yeah, totally. Now, somebody, I heard the rumor, and again, yep. I'm politically unsophisticated, so you, you, know, you, you tell me if this is true or not, that yeah, yep. a lot of these bills that are presented are written by corporations or business yep. or special interests? Yeah, special interest groups. They'll and write they a just, bill. They'll, they'll write it and say, would you pass this or check it yep, out? Yep, that's exactly what DeFazio has been doing, is yeah. that, that, you know, for each of those 488 bills, mm -hmm. you know, it's a private interest group that's saying, hey, you know, you need money for your campaign. We'd like this law passed. We got this bill written, mm -hmm. you know, all nice and ready for you to sign and sponsor. Mm -hmm. You know, would, would you mind signing it and we'll make a donation? And that's and how this, they do it. That's exactly how they do it. Dirty money all the way through. The guy's got a million dollars in his campaign account mm. and he hasn't even done any fundraising. But this know, is just. Is it true that you could see who's been get, uh, con contributing? Yeah, like yeah. It's uh, public. What's registered is public. Oh, right, right. But then the guy's also got a lot of dirty money. Uh, Peter DeFazio owns multiple properties in New Zealand mm. and he's also got three bank accounts. I mean, how much money do you need to have three bank accounts in a foreign country mm. with your multiple well, vacation how'd you houses? Get that information. It's curious. public information. Okay, so you can just check so it out. So he has, he has. That's public. Well, if it's public scrutiny, that probably, that probably stands up pretty good under scrutiny. You, when I there's a lot of people that are upset about this. Well, I mean, they'd be, yeah. you know, I mean, a lot of people are upset if, with people having more than them or money and so forth. I'm not upset with him having a lot of money or three bank accounts. I would be upset if, if, if with any politician who was getting dirty money they were hiding that was like caused from fraud or graft or yeah, this yeah. or that. That would really upset me. Um, no, exactly. Um, but that, that said, I, I was talking to one person who's a candidate running for state. Yeah, yep. And he was looking at some of the people that he was uh, running against. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like showing me their contributors. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. he would name this pharmaceutical company, this yep, timber yep. industry, so forth. Yep. And I was like, okay. And then he says, uh, I said, but you know, Candidates have to get money somewhere. So he goes, yeah, hey, totally. Yeah, what you know? So he shows me this other candidate who, who I won't name. Yeah, yep. You can look in the voters pamphlet and see his uh, contributors. Yeah, yep. And we're talking about local businesses, mom and pop stuff, not yeah, yeah, pharma, totally, not, totally. not Monsanto, yeah. not any, just mom yeah. and pop stuff. Yeah. Locally in the state, yep. and it's like, wow, this looks a lot less suspicious than this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, exactly. so you're saying a lot of politicians are funded by suspicious entities that are out there, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. There'll be. Uh, corporations that are founded mm. to, you know, funnel money mm. from, you know, bigger corporations that might want to make it look like a more friendly kind yeah. of donation. You, you ever know? see the movie, the documentary, The Corporation? No, I haven't, I haven't heard of that one. Well, well no. allegedly, they, uh, like these oil companies, they go in and they'll basically, to get around some rules or also to maybe entice um, uh, people in office, yeah, yep. they'll, they'll give contributions to every person in, in the federal government. Hey, that's nice of them. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you know, like, let's, say, let's say you're the type of person who's you know, uh, been unfriendly to the oil companies, or you're like, hey, I'm not in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. They'll say, well, we're going to give you $1,000 or $2,000 for your campaign. Yeah, yeah. We'll just say, here you go. 
But then you got a guy on the other side of the aisle from you who's very friendly with these guys yep. and, and is pushed in behalf of their interest. Yeah, yeah. He may get like $20,000. Yep, yeah. it happens, and that, and that's that was, and, and that, that's on record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this isn't so. I was I was pretty stunned by that. Uh, so so what other issues are going to be besides uh, you? You were going against right. Peter, and, and you're 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 upset with him. You're you're pretty much saying uh, that he hasn't done enough. Yeah, he's neglecting his duty. Okay. Yeah, totally. And so you're going to go in and, and you know and I you know um, and I and I believe that uh, a lot of people running saying I'm I'm sincere. I'm going to do this. I'm just yep. going to kick butt when I get in there. So. What are the things you're going to do that Peter has fi you, that you say Peter has failed us on? What what issues are you going to take on that he hasn't been able to? Well, this is going to wake up the rest of Congress. Okay. I mean, you know, not too long ago there was a big uh, you know trending series of photos of all these congressional representatives sleeping in the Congress hall. <laughs> yeah. You know, they look yeah. like some really comfy chairs, but you yeah. can see them all with their heads back. You yeah. know, like just literally sleeping on the job when they're in session. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. Well, they're old and out of shape. Somebody's got to get them and kick their butt in, maybe give them a, a congressional boot camp. I mean, I, I respect senior citizens. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> just say it's because they're old. I know a lot okay. of senior citizens that are, you know, hard workers. I'm they got work ethic. Yeah, I'm being vicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I get the joke. But okay. Yeah, totally. I just, yeah. So, you know, if, if I win the nomination mm -hmm. and then beat DeFazio in November, this okay. is going to wake up all of Congress. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to say, hey, you know, we can't just sit back and let our team accept all the money and do all the work for us mm -hmm. and then we just literally show up do a speech and then check out mm -hmm. until next election season mm -hmm. they're going to actually know that they got to get some work done if they want to keep their jobs because mm -hmm. if we can beat defazio mm -hmm. a 30-year incumbent and put in an average working class american mm -hmm. in the hall of congress that's going to wake them all up you know they're they're going to pay attention Mr. Streck yep. goes to Washington. I like yes. it. That's yeah, it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. Streck drains the swamp. <laughs> you know, like uh, like the go. movie. Right. Totally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, well, you know, no other Democrats are running against DeFazio, right? Uh, there is one, I is believe, there? but uh, he doesn't have a statement in the voters' pamphlet. I don't oh, believe. Oh, who's, who's that, Mike? Uh, I I forget his name, but honestly, he he doesn't have a chance because once again, the Democrats do all of their endorsements. Uh, before the primary. Okay, so, so that's the joke I like to say is if Jesus Christ mm -hmm. ran against Peter DeFazio as a Democrat, he couldn't get the nomination from the Democratic Party. Yeah, because they've made their decision ten years ago. Yeah, who they're going to give their endorsement okay, to. Okay, so so it's just it's the Republicans against Peter. Yep. Yep. And uh, so you, you know I've talked to quite a few of your competitors hey. who are going for the brass it's race. A, it's, a, it's a heated race. So I was you got a told by race. D.C. Yeah. This is one of the closest, hottest races in the country. Yeah. It is literally a dead heat race for the yeah. title yeah. to see who's going to get the Republican nomination. Well, what separates you from the other guys? Because they're all, to my mind, they all have uh, some good, all of you guys have like uh, yeah, uh, yeah. some good positive things to, you know, like qualities. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like... No, and nobody, I appreciate nobody, the competition. Nobody, nobody's yeah. like a... seems like a deadbeat to me. Of course, I'm unsophisticated. Yeah. Hey. So, yeah. Yeah. so wh wh what do you have to offer that the others don't, you think? Well, I have a fresh take mm -hmm. on what it means to represent the people. Okay. You know, there's too much of the conflict of interest with much of the opposition... You know, they're not really working to represent everybody. They're working to represent a key section that they've gotten funding from. Okay. So, you know, I'm a Republican who's working for real working class Americans. I've only raised about $500 in donations, most of it from selling T-shirts. Mm -hmm. um, got one right here. It's, uh, okay. they are pretty excellent. So, so you, you know, like it says, different okay. fourth district, our friend in Congress. People like it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yo. So, so you've, you've gone as far as you have, just on $500 and, and a lot of sweat. Well, a little bit more than $500. Yeah. I, I've done everything else out of my own pocket. Well, that, yeah, from, I've, yeah, I've yeah. spent thousands sure. of dollars of my own money right. that I worked hard and yeah. practiced conservative fiscal policy mm -hmm. to save that money up mm -hmm. so that I can make this race. Right. And I'm not asking anyone to do the work for me or pay my bills. I pay my bills. I do my work. Okay. And that's something none of the opposition is so doing. So you don't have any shadow governments kind of like nope, trying nope, to get nope. Nobody on Facebook. Yep, or, yep. You know, I'm, I'm pushing this yeah, whole yeah, campaign yeah. myself okay. uphill think, in yeah. the mud. And I, I like the competition. You know, I appreciate 
everyone is running against me in this race, you know, but they've all got flaws that make it so they can't win in November. What makes what, what Starting makes, off like Art Robinson. Okay. He's won the nomination four times in a row, and I appreciate the work that he's done to promote the Oregon Republican Party, mm -hmm. but his research is too easily attacked by the opposition. He, uh, he does a lot of research to examine uh, enzymes and stuff in people's urine to predict uh, future health issues. Oh, and okay. so he is saving lives, but it's too easily attacked as a media story by, you know, this guy wants urine samples from his constituents. You know, that's, <laughs> I mean, you know, regardless of, you know, how great it is that he's saving lives and how much that is respectable, it's okay. just too mockable by the media. Okay. You know, it's too easily misrepresented. Okay, so but, but at least he's not, I mean, that, 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 you know, he's not being um, fallacious when it comes to any of that stuff as far as, I mean, that's, he's not telling lies about, he's not making up stories that this, is, this kind of work will have benefits, but he's just being mocked. Yeah, yeah, okay. totally. He's just way too easily mocked so by so, DeFazio's so campaign. But so that's yeah. gonna, that may be like... That's why he's lost four times in a row. He's, he, if he wins the nomination, he's going to lose in November again. Yeah. I personally believe that yeah. just because, you know, it's like watching a horse lose a race four times in a row. Yeah. You know, it, it's not going to yeah. win but again. you got two other, uh, yeah. two or three other candidates that people seem to be excited about. Well, there's a couple other candidates. Uh, for example, uh, Joe Ray Perkins. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I really appreciate that she is uh, so strong and supportive of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, you know, very active with a lot of prayer groups. And, mm -hmm. you know, I really respect that. But she's got a criminal history that... You can look up in the Oregonian. Uh, she was arrested and charged with multiple Class C felonies for interfering with a police investigation and, I believe, uh, assault of a police officer because okay. uh, was basically... She was she convicted of those felonies or just uh, There was, a, I believe, a plea bargain where she did about a year or so of community service, mm -hmm. um, you know, but wouldn't be doing community service if she was innocent of the charges mm -hmm. is what it comes down to. You know, I, I stole a candy bar when I was... Uh, in high school. I had to do 100 hours of community service for that. doesn't mean I didn't steal the candy bar. Right. And my record is expunged. You, you check my criminal history, it doesn't show up as, uh, right. you know, this guy stole a king size Snickers. Right. But I'm willing to admit that I made that, as, I made that mistake, right. you know, as right. a high schooler. That right. happened. Yeah. Uh, she's just trying to deny that this ever happened and right. say, oh, that record's expunged. You know, forget about those class C felonies. Peter DeFazio and the opposition is not going to forget about those Class C felonies. And they're going to take her down. If yeah. she wins the nomination, she'll lose in November. So in a weird way, because it, of that it, criminal might, history. it might benefit him to have her win the primary. Yeah, yeah. Beat you guys. That's and what the Democrats want. Yeah, the Democrats want someone who's easy to beat to win the Republican nomination. That's what they'd like. That's that why. Sense. It's like a chess yeah. game, huh? Yeah, exactly. That's, huh. yeah, totally. I'm so learning stuff already. No, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, definitely. And so once again, they want Art Robinson to win because mm -hmm. the Democrats know how to beat him. Mm -hmm. You know, they've beaten him four times already. They can beat him again. Okay. So Art Robinson, Jerry Perkins, then we got Court Boyce. And you know, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a hard worker. I appreciate what he's done. You know, I appreciate what his family's done. But, you know, he's got, you know, family in law enforcement. He's got family who's also been career politicians, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have that much to offer. You know, him, he himself, he hasn't accomplished literally anything. His father was county commissioner, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's yeah. in his voters pamphlet statement, yeah, yeah. is okay. stuff about his dad and grandpa, but you know, this isn't medieval England. You don't yeah. get to yeah. win the seat in government just because your dad or your grandpa put right, in work right. in their lifetime. Right. You gotta do your own work. Sure. I'm putting in my work, Right. you know? You know, it shouldn't matter that uh, my great-grandfather, Zachary Taylor, basically won the Mexican-American War and secured our southern border. That's not my campaign strategy is to say, you know, some other guy did a bunch of work, so that's why I should get yeah. your vote. I got his, I'm putting in my own I got his DNA. But yeah, yeah, I'm putting yeah. in my own work. So okay. we're talking about Court Boyce, who's on his first term as a county commissioner, mm. and he put up his website to run for Congress about six months into his first year of his first term in office. Yeah. You know? That's literally the definition of someone who's just trying to be a career politician. And that's exactly the problem with politics today. You know, it shows a lot about a person's character mm. when they 
dedicate themselves to finishing the job they start. You know, if I'd won the election for mayor of Eugene back in 2016, it couldn't take the jaws of life to get me to give up that seat mm -hmm. and abandon my constituents to run for a different office. I'd be in there, in that office, doing the work that people entrusted me to do. That's interesting. You know, when you yeah. mentioned that, and uh, just to, sh again, show you how unsophisticated and unaware I am, if, you know, uh, until m talking to you guys, you yeah, yeah. guys open my eyes on a lot of things. Yeah, yep. um, I, wonder, I wonder, yeah. I wonder, I wonder how many people, because I, I have seen people um, go for an office and then they had to step down, somebody else appoint it, yep. and then they run for this, and maybe that was good, maybe that was bad, but that's, yeah, yeah. that's how it often is. I wonder how many people actually make the choice and say, I'm going to finish this, and the next go around, I'll go for it. I'll, I'll just take a hiatus from this. Uh, I'll, I'll finish up being mayor or governor, then I'll take a hiatus, maybe uh, raise some money, go around and speak, and then run for president or run for this. Yeah, yeah. I, I never wondered about that before, and I, now, now you've got me wondering. I wonder how many people yep. feel the way you've do, you do, yep. and how many people actually not just say that, but walk that talk. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever looked into that? You know, can you name people who've just did that? That sounds... You that know, sounds, I mean, that resonates too rare. with me. That resonates, that resonates like, hey, finish a job that you promised. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's too like rare that. that we've got people that have, you know, strong work ethic mm -hmm. in Congress. You know, it's all, we're talking about people that they don't really manage their own campaign. They mm -hmm. pay other people uh, mm -hmm. thousands or tens of thousands or mm -hmm. even more to yeah. just manage their campaign for them. And that's not the sort of thing I would ever yeah. do. I would, on the yeah. principle of the matter, want to do that work myself. Mm -hmm. And I am doing that work myself. Yeah. But you guys, you know, you look at yourself and Court and, and Joe Ray. Yeah, and there's also one last person, uh, sure. Michael Poland. He's uh, also running out of Southern Oregon. Right, he's down uh, Grants Pass, along a state guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you know, he didn't even have enough money to file a voter's pamphlet statement. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not saying you have to be rich to run for Congress, mm -hmm. but you got to have at least enough money to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like the guy. I, mm -hmm. I respect that he threw his hat into the ring. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he just needs more experience and more mm -hmm. time. Has he run for office before? Uh, he's not run for office before. This is his mm -hmm. first time, you know. Okay. So I appreciate people getting involved. I mm -hmm. think there should not be one single uncontested seat mm -hmm. on the ballot. Right. There should not be a single person yeah. who gets to keep their seat in office by default. Right. But literally half the city council of Eugene, for example, they're running unopposed. They don't even put a statement or a picture in the voters pamphlet to educate the voters about who the representatives are. Because mm -hmm. these people like staying in the shadows. They like getting to sleep on the job. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the way they want it. There's no the, competition. The, the, I want competition. The city, the city council, they don't get, I mean, they don't do it for money, do they? I mean, because they don't get paid that much. I mean. I mean, there's, there's always money behind the scenes. Oh, so, okay. you know, for example, we've got the City Hall in Eugene was mm -hmm. torn down five years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. And they've just been trying to do a dirty land swap with the county so they can get their construction friends money. And basically, it's in the deed mm -hmm. of that land that the Skinner family donated mm -hmm. back in the day that that land, originally a 30-acre parcel, mm -hmm. has to be used for City Hall. If it's not used for City Hall, it reverts to the heirs of that family. So that's why for five years now, this Democrat-controlled city council has sat on their hands and not done anything because they refuse to admit their mistake and they refuse to give up their corrupt agenda. Hmm. You know, I mean, they've just got it fenced off as this ugly eyesore. Yeah. When I go down to city council, they duck down two inches in their seat every single time I walk in the room. You know, they, they I, sh I should go to a city can next time you go. The videos are on my YouTube. Okay. So it's uh, it's great. They're all on my website, uh, www.votestrack.com. Okay. There's some great videos up on there. And you well, can I'm going to start asking you guys to share and send me. I'm going to subscribe to yeah, the yeah. site. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. there's, there's some good stuff on there. But I'm going to subscribe to your, your competitor sites, too. Hey, so you're hey. not worried about that. Hey, go for it. Okay, they, you know, there's no disappointments there so okay. far as. Uh, okay. Laughing stock. I just want yeah. to be <laughs> fair to each of them because, I, like I said, still, even though what you're telling me, I, I found uh, yep. in, the, in each in your own way uh, the candidates to be impressive in, in their own way. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, just, it, it just, you know, I'm unsophisticated, so it'll be basically interesting to see which one of you is will be the best for the job. I'm, you know, you've done a lot that's impressed me, man. I, you know, I, I just can't. It's a lot of work, it's honestly. A lot it's a lot of work, work and uh, commitment. You know, what I really appreciate is talking to the average person on the street. And 
they're surprised that, mm -hmm. you know, every time I hand out a business card to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, I tell them, it's just one form you got to fill out, mm -hmm. a single page, piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You fill it out, you give it to either the city recorder or the mm -hmm. counts, uh, the county or county the state, yeah, yeah, county or the recorder. state, yeah. depending on what office you're running for, mm -hmm. and they process it from there, and then you're on the ballot. You know, and then there's one more piece of paper you got to file to get your statement and picture in there. Right. So what but people are always amazed. They're like, this, that's cool. Right. You know, I, I like that you're doing this. Whether it's a Democrat or a Republican mm -hmm. that I'm talking to, they appreciate this campaign. They say, yeah, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're trying to represent us. And I've talked to countless Democrats even in Eugene, mm -hmm. liberal wasteland Eugene. Mm -hmm. And they've been telling me they're not going to register a Republican to vote in the primary. But if I make it to November, they will vote for me against DeFazio. They say 32 years is too long, especially when he's not doing the work he's supposed to do and really yeah. representing his constituents. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah the one, uh, I'll tell you one thing I'd like to see just to, to, um, is, uh, you know, I believe in a, a good retirement package, but it kind of chased my hide to see somebody go in for like four years and then get like the type of yep. retirement that... Yeah, you know, when DeFazio uh, retires, he's going to get about $130,000 a year for the rest yeah. of his life. That, that, and that's on top of the millions that he's already yeah, collected uh, that, that, that well, are I mean, sitting in New Zealand. You know, of course, I could argue that he's been in there for 32 years, but you get people going for four years and they get, they get quite a bit. They yep. get more that than happens I think too often is that yeah. as soon as someone gets elected, they're a millionaire. Yeah. Because so, it's like yep. four, four years, if you can't parlay four or six years... That kind of money, especially when all your uh, overhead you get per diem and all sorts of other things, uh, yeah, yeah. a certain budget for your staff and, and everything yeah, else. Totally. Right? Yeah, totally. When I last saw Peter DeFazio, he was doing a quote unquote city hall meeting. We don't have a city hall in Eugene, so it was over at LCC. Mm -hmm. But uh, I went there because I was interested what in was the that? competition. When, when was that? Uh, uh, about three months ago at this okay. point. Okay. So I was there, and you know, he, he definitely recognized me. He spent half his speech being like, you know, kind of cockeyed, like a like a pigeon or something, man. Like, really? This? All right. Well, you know. So he's talking, and he explained. Look at me right in the eye. This race can go either way, Democrat or Republican. We are one of the only gray districts in the country. We don't lean solidly red or solidly blue. The fourth district was the closest between Trump versus Hillary for the 2016 presidential election. 500 votes would have swung this district red, and that's because. People are sick and tired of the corruption within the establishment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, even R. Robinson, he's gotten close, but he just can't cross that finish line. Mm. You know, I am working really hard, and I believe that based on what people have told me, mm. you know, because as, as nice a guy as Art is, he represents the Republican establishment. He's mm. been running the same, same campaign, mm. collecting tons of money mm -hmm. from the establishment. Mm -hmm. He's an establishment candidate, okay. and I'm not. Yeah. And so that's what it's going to take to have the Republicans beat the Democrats, mm -hmm. is having someone that doesn't represent the establishment. Mm -hmm. The way the court voice represents the establishment, mm -hmm. the way Art Robinson represents the establishment, the way Joe Ray Perkins represents the establishment. You know, I don't. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I've, one thing each of them told me they were sharing uh, their issues on how what they would what they will or will not do about the homeless and yep. about the education or educational system and affordable housing. Those yeah, three yeah. issues. Uh, I'm sure you've given those three issues a lot of thought. Which three issues again? Well, the one. Well, first is like, what do we do about the the growing homeless population and people in danger of becoming jobs. homeless? Jobs. Okay. Yeah, jobs definitely. Mm -hmm. We got too many programs that just are being completely neglected once again because the unions have a deadlock on who gets the jobs. Okay. So if we had government contracts mm -hmm. that were going to companies that worked to employ, mm -hmm. you know, veterans or the homeless, there's a lot of homeless veterans, mm -hmm. there's a lot of homeless people that are from a generation that learned how to work with their hands. Mm -hmm. So we could get government contracts to people that have been denied work opportunities. And, you know, that's what people have told me is they want a job. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't just want handouts. And right. too much in Eugene and Oregon as a whole. You know, people who come here looking for work within the homeless community are looked down upon 
by people in the homeless community. They say this isn't where you come to work for a living. This is where you come to get high and be a drug addict and leech off the government system and be, a, yeah, just you a welfare system. You think that there's actually a, 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 a big percentage of people that say that or do that? Yeah, that's what I've been right. told by people that are on the street. Huh. You know, one guy told me he moved here from Florida. Mm. He was working hard as a, you know, private worker mm -hmm. doing construction work and he was being ostracized by other people within the homeless community because he wasn't just trying to get drunk and get high all day because okay, he so was trying to work. So you're acknowledging that there are people who are homeless who, are, who aren't getting high. And, yeah, absolutely. And there are people, yeah, yeah. but those are the people that are the ones getting left behind mm -hmm. is the people who want to better themselves. You know, too much of this system is basically going towards enabling a core group of people that are criminal offenders. Mm -hmm. I, I live down next to Whitebird, mm -hmm. uh, the Eugene Community Crisis Center. I oh, lived no, about... Uh, what, at 12th Street? 10th? Yep, 12th. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 12th okay. and Ferry. That's where I lived for three years. Uh -huh. And every single day, I had to see the same group of about 20 people. They are junkies. They are meth addicts. Mm -hmm. They are the hardest drinking alcoholics you can imagine. And they're the ones that suck up the most resources from the services that are meant to go towards people that are really working to better themselves. Mm. You know, if the social workers are spending all their time trying to handhold, you know, Johnny Junkie, then the person who's actually working to benefit themselves doesn't get any time because mm. it's the opinion of these social workers that the people that are the biggest problems are the ones that need the most help. And that's not right. We should be giving uh, rewards to people that are working to benefit themselves. Mm -hmm. Rewards in the form of jobs, mm -hmm. housing, mm -hmm. you know? Because that's what gets people off the streets is mm -hmm. when people want to bring themselves up. Mm -hmm. You know, someone can't just lie in the gutter with a needle in their arm, which I have literally seen walking to my house back when I lived there. That's what got me out of the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, the the a company that I rented from called me. They were raising the rent on everybody else, but they offered to keep the rent same for me because I did so much work right. keeping that block clean. Right. You know, I was having to literally go out there and pick up needles and stuff like that. I wasn't picking yeah. up needles. I was literally tossing junkies off the corner. Okay. Yeah. 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 Five or six at a time. Yeah. I'd have to, you know, growl these guys down and say, you know, this is not where you sit around and drink all day. This is my front yard. It'd be nice you know? to figure out, you know, some way. Again, you know, um, I was talking to Boyce about this, and yep. um, I, I know people get high to get drunk because uh, they have trouble dealing with uh, anxiety. Somewhere along the line, we have yep. to figure out, well, as we become adults, how do uh, you know how do we best? Because we all get faced with uh, anxious things and tr traumatic yeah, definitely. things in life. So we got to figure definitely. out how do we how do we deal with this stuff without getting drunk, without getting high. Yeah, and so there's got to be there's got to be yep. um, some methods. I don't know what that is. It's just a pondering. You know, I, I really think that it is work. When you give somebody mm -hmm. a purpose, yeah. you know, a job, you know, when people enjoy their job, they really become their job. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter what someone does. They should take pride in their work. And Good. you can tell when people do. Well, you're talking to a, work, a person who loves work and a work. Yeah, yeah, job. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, I mean, but yeah. there are people who just don't like the work. Exactly. And yeah. I, don't, I don't understand it. I mean, I mean, yeah. I, I, well, I understand not wanting to work at a place that just grinds in the ground. But a lot of times people don't like a job. Yeah, it's the concept of working in general that I they think don't want to do. In my opinion, yeah. I think it's because they don't have a life purpose. They haven't said, what is my purpose? Because yeah. I've worked a lot of unsavory jobs that I yeah, yeah. actually appreciated and kept because I knew that was a stepping stone Mm -hmm. Towards my mm -hmm. purpose that I oh, have. Oh, definitely. In life. I was like you have a, you, well, just your. Purpose. Yeah, I worked in food service for a solid ten years, basically. Yeah. Your uh, purpose is to, to 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 be a public servant. Yeah. Yep. And so you worked a lot of jobs that you may not. Well, I kept that like. same job. It was a uh, yeah. You know, it's well, punching a clock at the university. Yeah. You know, the terms of the contract are that if you're more than five minutes late. Yeah. That counts as a you know tardy. Yeah. You do that three times within three months, you you're fired. Yeah. If you're late more than 10 minutes, mm -hmm. just once, you're fired. Mm -hmm. I kept that job for between 2008 and mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah. And, you know, that was showing up on time, nights, weekends, yeah. holidays. Yeah. A lot of people do that yeah. and, they, and they, they can somehow stomach a job 
that they normally wouldn't stomach as long as they have like uh, something. I love my job. Or, or, yeah, yeah, I, I work. I work in financial aid right now, okay. and I, I have great coworkers. I really okay. appreciate the job. Yeah. But you know, I'm always going to remember my first job fondly. Okay. Because I took a lot of pride in that job. Yeah. It was, you know, enjoyable. Yeah. To have a task, yeah. get it done, move on to the next task. Yeah. You know, whether it's washing dishes, cleaning the tables. Right. Helping the food prep. Yeah. I was cashier, uh, is where I was essentially uh, permanently stationed towards right. the end of that employment, and yeah. that was fantastic. You but know, you have, but the thing is, you yep. always have goal outside goals and things in life. You say, hey, no, definitely, because uh, you yeah. know I found that when people have uh, dreams and goals when it comes to going at that yep. something greater than themselves, that that job that normally would be dreary for some people is like a, seems like a blessing to that other person. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I wish more people felt that way about any job that they worked. No, definitely. You know, so, yeah. and even if you got uh, employers or, or people you work with that aren't that enjoyable, that's life, man. I mean, yep. And I want to bring more jobs into this yeah. state. So, okay. we, the logging industry is what always yes. kept Oregon going. Yeah. So, I looked it up, and in the fourth district, mm -hmm. we've got four national forests mm -hmm. and one state forest. Okay. And the reason that we've had all these out of control forest fires is because there's a lot of you know. Well intentioned but uneducated liberals mm -hmm. that have a zero tolerance policy about logging. Mm -hmm. And honestly, what we need is common sense logging policy mm -hmm. that allows private companies to harvest lumber from mm -hmm. our national forests and the state forest mm -hmm. in a way that's safe for the environment, you know, do the replanting, clean it up. But that's just what has to be done because what has been going on in zero logging. They let all the jobs go. They put people out of work. Mm -hmm. And all of this dry bush, you know, builds up yeah. in the forests and over need, years. It needs and, to be taken care of. And when the small fires happen, they put them out mm -hmm. because they say protect the forest, protect the forest. Don't cut the trees. Don't oh, let the yeah, burning happen. Yeah, don't yeah. let the small fires happen. Mm -hmm. And then it all builds up to the point where we have these massive wildfires mm -hmm. that destroy communities and put people in harm. Mm -hmm. And it's all done, you know, as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. And that's what these limousine liberals have done, you know, by putting people out of work and putting people in harm's way. Yeah. That's what it comes down to with the irresponsible environmental practices. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, yeah, again, it's so. Uh, so many of the things that you're, you and, and uh, Joe Ray and, and it seems like you guys are in agreement about what you want to do. Uh, but how, how would you do it? You know, once you get into, if you guys get into Washington, what you know, you, you have the same goals. But how would where would the money come from? Where would the where would you know, like um, well, like for for the, the you know, caring better for our seniors and and the kids and and and. Uh, no, well, the money's already there. It's just being completely uh, misused okay. and you know funneled into the wrong hands. You know, okay. this look at the government books. They're paying mm -hmm. like you know five hundred dollars for a hammer, two thousand dollars for a toilet seat, or who knows and how much for body armor. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. exactly. You know, you look these things up or yeah. try to look it up, and they hide that information. Yeah. And the reason why they hide that information is because they're misappropriating the funds because mm -hmm. they've got corporate backers. Mm -hmm that want that government contracts, mm -hmm. often union organized, mm -hmm. that they're just trying to siphon funds off of the mm -hmm. government. And if we actually had people in Congress right. that were willing to go over the books and put that money where it really belongs, you know, we, they wouldn't be talking about raising taxes. You know, they'd recognize that the federal government has way more money than they need. You know, to do everything necessary, we can still maintain a, the strongest military in the world. Uh -huh. You know, rebuild our infrastructure, create more jobs. It's all about stimulating the economy, just like we used to. You know, for too long they've been letting these jobs go overseas. You know, for example, I would support tariffs. You know, on areas that would give us better competition against our industrial opponents. For okay. example, like China. You know. We sell a car to China, they'll put a 50% tariff on it because they want to protect their local industry. Right. Chinese cars sold here, we've got a 2% tariff on it. And that's not right. You know, the, Trump's taken this on. He's done great by making good deals. You know, even though a lot of people might, you know, whine about it, the real fact of the situation is that tariffs are necessary to promote domestic industry.
Hmm. You know, we want the money coming in and we want the money staying in. Mm -hmm. You know, this concept of just letting all the jobs go overseas to foreign factories, you know, mm -hmm. they should pay a, f a fee for that. And when that fee hits a point where it is more cost effective to be made in America, mm -hmm. they'll make it in America. And then we'll have internal domestic competition mm -hmm. to make better products at a better price. And we'll have more money coming in and staying in. And that's exactly what America used to do. Yeah. Well, you know, I, it, it just occurred to me, even though these two other people, I think the Republicans as well, who are running for state, so yeah, yeah. state rep, yeah, yeah. is Mark uh, Herbert and Christine Ruck. Right, right, yes. I, I think, recall the names. Yeah, yes. and I, I think you guys would have a nice, interesting, and beneficial, mutually beneficial conversation. You know? I, I uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm just I, I've spoken ideas. with a lot of people. Um, okay. Some people are friendly, some people are not so friendly. Well, I think, um, I think you guys yeah. would be friendly. I mean, even if you disagree, but I think you all would benefit from hearing, you know. I, just, I, would, I would like to, like, just sit, whether it's off the record kind of thing, just listen to you guys talk, because I think you guys yeah, have yeah. awesome, interesting ideas. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so anyways, uh, so we're... we're um, Pretty much getting close to out of time. All right, so let me run through the list. Yeah, let me run through that list yeah, one more time. Number one, protect the Second Amendment. Okay. Federal penalties against anyone who's infringing our Second Amendment rights. Okay. That includes legislators mm -hmm. and rogue judges. Okay. Number two, veterans. Mm -hmm. We gotta promote veterans' health care mm -hmm. and improve access to mm -hmm. non-VA doctors. Mm -hmm. And on the health care note, protect doctors from fraudulent frivolous malpractice lawsuits. Okay. Reduce the main overhead costs for doctors, mm -hmm. open up more private practices, mm -hmm. and then the average American will be able to afford better health care. Okay. Cut the red tape so that doctors make the decision about people's medication, not the federal government mm -hmm. or the state government setting up all this red tape so that mm -hmm. doctors are making their prescriptions based on what's the least work for them. Okay. You know, that's not right. right. Number three, the foster care system. We gotta protect children in foster care and senior citizens in foster care. Okay. You know, there's too much human trafficking. A lot of that comes from the youth foster program. Mm -hmm. And there's too much abuse in both programs. You know, number four, taxes. We got to take on the payroll tax. No payroll taxes for companies that are worth less than $10 million. No overtime taxation. If you work more than 40 hours a week, you keep every penny of that time over 40 hours because that's money that working class families need. That's why they're working those extra hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then moving on from there, promoting tariffs, creating a free and open economy mm -hmm. for the American domestic production, and creating more jobs by having a common sense logging policy that makes our forests healthy again, mm -hmm. prevents future disasters from wildfires, okay. and brings up more jobs. Okay. Oregon had the most booming timber industry, you know, for the longest time. That was our number one mm -hmm. piece of the economy. And the liberals just shut it down. They took away jobs and there was no, no real reason to do that. It was based on false science mm -hmm. that said that anything to take timber is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's just, it, it's ignorant is what mm -hmm. it comes down to. We need a common sense logging policy that mm -hmm. promotes jobs and make, keeps the forests healthy. Because, you know, if the forests are all burning down because of these ignorant policies, that's not keeping the forests healthy. And, and that's it's a lot dangerous of wood that's, to people. Yeah, and that's a and lot that's, of wood that's being used yeah. up that could have been harvested. Yeah, and that's a lot of money. It could have been protected, yeah. by, you know, Definitely. either way. Both oh, ways. Yeah, both it's ways, lost yeah. money that could have been exported yeah. or used to build homes. And it's dangerous you know it it creates and that costs a, a lot of money though exactly up the fires exactly oh, oh gosh yeah. yeah yeah destroyed destroyed so much of the uh, various economies definitely so next what uh, what else is on the agenda all right well getting congress to actually go back to work okay. because if a 30-year incumbent loses to a real working class american mm -hmm. you know like me in this race mm -hmm. that's going to wake up all the congress they're not going to be napping on the job like they have been mm -hmm. so Peter DeFazio hasn't been doing his job. You know, 32 years in office, 488 bills sponsored, only nine of them passed, and only one in the past 10 years? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely unacceptable. It's inexcusable. And there's a lot of people, both Democrats and Republicans, mm -hmm. that are mad about this. There's a lot of Democrats that are willing to show the Democrat establishment that 
They're willing to put a Republican in office mm -hmm. to fix these mistakes. And I'm ready to do that. I think I'm better as a candidate than my competition. I appreciate the competition. Mm -hmm. But Art Robinson, you know, his, his research is too easily misrepresented. You know, Joe A. Perkins, despite being a really solid member of the faith and the church, her criminal record with those uh, felonies being charged. That makes her vulnerable. That makes her incredibly vulnerable to okay. the, you know, fake news media. You know, they'd have a heyday with that, you know. Accused felon, I'll, you know, you don't do community service because you're innocent, basically. You know, just records expunged, but the newspaper article's still there, and it's going to be there. Yeah. And, you know, Court Boyce, just the definition of a wannabe career politician who's biting off more than he can chew. You know, he should have finished his first term in office before looking for another government position. Mm. We have too much of this leapfrogging. Mm -hmm. where someone just gets into office and they try and use that as an excuse to hunt for another government office. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even finish six months in his first term before he put up his website to run for Congress. And he spent his whole first term just looking for handouts mm -hmm. from people so that he could get this new job. You know? So despite the hard work that his, the rest of his family's done, and you know, I appreciate that he's been putting up the, some the competition like he has been. You know, this is good practice for me. You know, Michael Pullen, you know, nice guy. But like they say, nice guys finish last. You know, he didn't have enough money to put a statement in the voters pamphlet. Mm -hmm. I got money. I worked hard for my money. Mm -hmm. And I've been cons conservative, fiscally responsible mm -hmm. with my money so that I can be independently financed. I am not obligated to private interests. Okay. You know, I'm obligated only to my voters and what their priorities are. And if nominated, I can beat DeFazio. And if I go to Washington mm -hmm. to secure this position, you know, that's going to give me a tactical advantage over every other congressional representative. They're going to say, this is a man who really represents the people, and he's got the people behind him. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to work with this guy. Otherwise, he's going to make us look bad. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm great at digging up dirt. Yeah. All these congressional representatives have decades worth of dirt on them. Yeah. And when I hit the House floor, every single one of them is going to wake up. Yeah. They're going to recognize that they got to do some work if they want to keep their jobs. And we're going to get some real legislation passed that actually helps real Americans. Mm. We're going to promote the economy. We're going to defend the Second Amendment. Mm. We're going to protect veterans. We're going to improve the foster care system for yeah. children and adults. This is what it's really going to take to make America great again. That sounds, that yeah. sounds, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyone who's interested, there's lots of videos on the website, www.votestrike.com. Mm -hmm. We've also got the Twitter. I've got over 10,000 Twitter followers. Let's see. That's at real Stefan Strike. Uh, yep, over 10,000 and climbing yeah. daily. It's pretty nice. Yeah. A little color. Uh, yeah, yeah. Flyer. Yeah, the pamphlets. Everybody loves the American flag. Yeah. Yep. And. Uh, pretty. Filled in there. I like your My business production. card. Thank you. Yeah, totally, totally. That's upside down. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, but yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. So own in. And this is all stuff that I did the work for myself. I didn't pay anyone else thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to do this designing. You know, all my competition, they're having their work done for them by somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the work myself. Mm. You know, this. I'm exactly what I want to see in other offices. I want to. I don't want to see a single office that is uncontested. Mm. And lo and behold, you know, when I run for something, there's other people that, you know, they want to do what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, they, they think they can take me on. That's why I got four competitors in this race, just mm. like I had four competitors in my last race. But we, what we really need is not people just trying to, you know, latch on to what looks good. Okay. You know, they need to actually think independently and go for an office that they can win. You know? There's too many uncontested seats. Uh, you know, one thing I'm curious on about, and I, yep. and I asked um, each of the candidates, is uh, uh, a lot of times I've noticed yep. that the Republicans and the Democrats and all the other uh, uh, parties, like uh, part of the reason why I'm nonpartisan, is that 90% of the things that we need to take care of that we're all mm -hmm. issues that we all have to uh, take care of. Yeah, yeah. 
Republicans, Democrats, everybody agrees, yes, these need to be taken care mm -hmm, of. Mm -hmm. we, we need this, we need that, we need that. There's a couple yeah. hot button issues, uh, stuff to deal with. Are you yep. pro-choice, pro-life? Are you, are you like gun control, no gun control, anti-guns? Those are hot uh, button issues. Yeah, yeah. Are you for uh, states, more state rights, less state rights, more for centralized government? Yeah, yeah. Uh, those are questions that people that often interest people this, these days, you know. Yeah, yep. So I, I don't know what your feelings are on any of that. Uh, I don't know what your feelings are on, uh, you know, uh, like with this new medical marijuana and stuff like that. You know. You know, I, I appreciate the fact that the federal government is taking a step back from controlling what the average American can do. Mm -hmm. I do not support the commercial marijuana industry. Mm. I think it's wrong. I think it's corrupt. I think a lot of it is just motivated by Democrat politicians that want tax money. Mm. You know, that's just not right. The mm. same people that want to bring all this marijuana business into Oregon, they're the same people trying to take away our guns. Mm. You know, if someone who's an average American, you know, believes that medical marijuana works best for them, I don't think there's a reason the federal government should step into that. We're talking about small production for mm -hmm people in need, you know, veterans or the mm -hmm. elderly, mm -hmm. you know, or just average Americans, mm -hmm. you know, but when you put all this corporate money into something, mm -hmm. that corrupts it. Is there a lot of corporate money? Because I, like, locally. Definitely. The marijuana industry is... Well, uh, I mean, locally, I know people yep. who have basically started their own growth. In fact, uh, some of the people I know uh, that got into it were anti-corporation, anti-business, um, they, they just, they did just mm -hmm. like jealous of the business or, you know, and, and so yeah, forth, yeah. Um, you know, ticked off that, you know, that they weren't paying the payroll taxes and so yeah, forth, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. they, hey, they got to pay payroll, they, you know, and then they go into business because it's kind of like um, forever, this forbidden thing, yep. and they're like, oh, we're going to have, you know, everybody should be allowed to smoke pot, everybody should, you know, medical marijuana, and I'm not saying I'm for or against it, I'm just saying yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm repeating what I've heard said, yeah, yeah. and so then all of a sudden they put all this money in investing and so forth, and they're, you yep. know, 80 hours, 100 hours a week, building this, this medical marijuana thing yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden you know the grows and everything the equipment into that and then all of a sudden they're complaining that they're under the same gun and with the same constraints that mm -hmm. the businesses they were complaining about like oh i got to do all these rules i got to pay payroll taxes exactly exactly I got regulations government's demands yeah, yeah. and so all of a sudden i hear them crying like a lot of the other businesses, yeah, legi yep. le legitimate gripes. Yeah, yeah. We're being taxed to death. We're being this. We're, yep. we're, being, we're yep. being regulated out and of business. And that's the motivation behind it, is yeah. all this corporate money. Right now, they're just jostling uh -huh. to see which corporation can put the most rules in place mm -hmm. with their bot legislators mm -hmm. to make it so that only the biggest corporation can grow and harvest marijuana. And... That's not right. Yeah. You know, these are the same people that don't care if they're selling drugs to children. Yeah. They're the same people that do care about taking guns yeah. away from the average American. And I want to fight against that. Yeah, I hear a lot of the growers yeah. saying exactly what you're saying. They're saying we're yeah. being squeezed out by some of these Exactly. Things and that's the been top, the plan yeah. from the beginning yeah. Yeah. by these major corporate yeah. agendas. Yeah. You know, they, they just got their bot politicians and their yeah. corporate money. And that's all they're gunning for yeah. as an end result is to make it so that, you know, only the ABC Corporation mm. uh, can do the marijuana business mm -hmm. and the average American who invested lots of money into this, was lied to, mm -hmm. gets put out of business. You know, people should be investing themselves in legitimate businesses. Mm -hmm. And the way that this whole marijuana thing has been completely blown out of proportion as something that's for the average American when it's really not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a plant. That's what it comes down to. It's a plant that shouldn't be allowed around children. It's a plant that should be treated as something that, you know, shouldn't be a corporate commodity. That's what it comes down to. You know, we don't have regulations that are really working to protect people. Yeah. You know, for example, if your neighbors are growing pot and you are injured in some way as because of some sort of burglary, you've got no protection because of that, hmm. you know, except through your own insurance, if right. you've got it. Right. You know, there's too much of a risk that is, once again, motivated by money. Mm -hmm. And 
That's not right. Do you think that, uh, here's, a, here's a question a lot of uh, people running for office get is, uh, yep. um, you, you know, there's always some people on one side of the fence saying, oh, you know, uh, adults, not children, but adults yeah, yeah. should be allowed, uh, should be allowed to, to engage in whether it's mushrooms or pot or this or that, providing it doesn't cause them to go on a killing spree or something like that. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously you got some things are like bath salts and all sorts of weird stuff causing crazy Yeah, it's ridiculous. Now. What we need is, uh, you know, I'm in favor of a start from scratch approach to the Controlled Substances Act. Mm. You know, first off, it's not being enforced. Mm. And in short, it's encouraging drug use and drug abuse in America by promoting the black market. Mm. You know, it puts too much restrictions on doctors about what they can and can't prescribe. Mm. That's right. And it yeah. puts too much money into the cartels. So we need to treat drugs as a health issue. Mm -hmm. We need to treat the crime and the money and the violence involved with drugs mm -hmm. as a real problem and enforce the laws on the books. Mm. You know, if someone's a violent drug dealer, mm -hmm. they should be held accountable. If someone is causing harm to their neighbors because they're a drug dealer, they should also be held accountable. And this revolving door system that just lets people commit crimes, pay their fees, and go out to pursue their criminal enterprise again, mm -hmm. that's wrong. And we're seeing that reflected from mm -hmm. the bottom of the swamp to the top of the swamp with these corporate industries that are trying to get into the marijuana business. You know, w money should not be involved with drugs. Yeah. You know, we're talking about Corporations that are being corrupted, mm -hmm. you know, if something's a medicine, it should be treated like a medicine and the free market should allow the best provider mm -hmm. to give people in need that medicine, yeah. you know, and what we've got right now is too much red tape that makes it impossible for patients in need to access new medication, mm -hmm. to access proven medication. Mm -hmm. It's all powered by big pharma mm -hmm. that wants to push through whatever makes the most money for them mm -hmm. through whatever hype they can push to promote their drugs. Yeah. Now, they're not actually promoting medicine yeah. is what it comes down to as yeah. a concept. It's, it's, it's yeah. become a crazy world. Well, listen, we're out of time, and I got to tell you, I, had to, it, I could speak to you for hours. Hey, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I appreciate the interview. Thank you, yeah. Vincent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Thanks for pushing the website, yeah. roadstrike.com. We got more interviews there. Yeah. We got more videos there. There's more information for anyone who's interested, definitely. Mm. And yeah. so we are keeping up the fight for the rest of this campaign. I'm excited to see what the numbers are going to look like at the end. Mm. I've been told this is one of the closest races in the country. That's that's what I've heard. That's what makes yeah. me. Uh, I've been excited. It's been exciting for me talking to yeah. each of you guys. Well, anyways, this is the end of the session. This will be on YouTube. Yep. This this is uh, far beyond an hour. So uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, um, uh, which I'm glad. I w wish I would have hey. done this with all the candidates. Yeah, but, yeah, definitely. Uh, on YouTube, I could go beyond an hour. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, you guys. Righteous. See you Crushing next time. It.